Welcome to this time of worship. We are so glad that you chose to join us this morning. My name is Pastor Deborah Lerner. I'm the senior pastor here at Shepherd of the Hills. I'm joined by Pastor Alma Aguirre Olivares, our associate pastor. And I have to say right up front, I am so grateful to Pastor Alma for filling in for me last week. She did such a wonderful job, and I know that because, yeah, she did. I was at my kitchen table with my computer, and I, I worshipped with you at 9 o'clock last week, and I so enjoyed the message, I enjoyed the service, and I still couldn't talk at all at that point. I'm still a little weird with the voice, so hoping that it will come back. It, I lost it suddenly at the end of the second service two weeks ago, 
never happened before like that. I hadn't coughed. I didn't have a post-nasal drip. I lost my voice. And then I got all the rest of it and had to work my way through all of that. I'm, it's good to be back. We're glad that you're here, whether you're in the room or joining us online. If it is your very first time with us, we're especially glad to welcome you. And if you consider yourself a newcomer in any way, whether you've been here before or not, if you haven't received one of our newcomer bags, please stop by our Welcome Center and pick one of these up. It's just a little thank you that we're, to, to indicate how glad we are that you chose to stop in and worship with us. Uh, our prayer is always that you find the things that you need as we worship together. That if you need hope, you'll walk out of here feeling like tomorrow is full of possibility. And if you need strength, you'll walk out feeling like you can take on whatever it is that's being hard in your life. And if you need love that, or comfort, that you'll feel like you've received a hug. And some of that will come from us, but most of it will come from Him, the one who is the host of our worship, Jesus our Christ. It is He that calls us here, and He is present here, and our hope is that you experience that presence in a wondrous way, and are touched deeply and changed as you walk out the door. It is helpful if you fill out the prayer and presence card, which serves as our registration of attendance, and you can place these into the boxes by each one of the exit doors as you leave. We begin every service in the very same way, reminding ourselves what God thinks of us, because somehow we forget. So I invite you to remind yourself right now, I am chosen. I am blessed, and I am loved, and that's true for all these folks around you, so would you please stand as you are comfortable and put a big smile on your face and say to someone near to you, you are chosen, you are blessed, and you are loved, and then let them know how glad we are that they're here. And then let's include our online audience by turning toward that camera and saying to those people, you are chosen. You are blessed, and you are loved, and that is the truth. I invite you to be seated. Our mission candle today shines in honor of our associate pastor, the Reverend Alma Aguirre Lavares. Pastor Alma has transformed our caring ministries over the last several years. I'm so grateful for her work in that regard. And she's blessed us in many other ways. We're grateful for her ministry among us. And this mission candle comes from me as the senior pastor and from the Staff Parish Relations Committee. And Alma has a word that she would like to share with the congregation at this time. Uh, good morning. I have a special announcement that I, and important information that I want to share with you. And it is that I've been in a... Um, process of discernment for the past several months and I have requested to go on a voluntary leave of absence beginning July 1st of this year. Due to personal reasons, I hope to stay away from ministry for a season of at least 12 months <clears throat> and I will not be reappointed here at Shepherd for the coming conference year for that reason. And I want to say that it has been a true honor and a pleasure to serve here with all of you in all kinds of ministries together for the past five years. I will greatly miss each one of you and each one of the things that we were doing together. Um, having the opportunity to have you be part of my life. And in the opportunity of being part of yours is something that I will treasure for ever and ever. And um, I will also miss our wonderful, wonderful staff that I got um, a chance to work with for this time. The associate um, pastor position here at Shepherd of the Hills will be put on uh, what is called the list of clear openings sometime soon. That means that um, our other clergy 
who might be interested in coming and being your associate pastor here will have an opportunity to submit their names. Then the cabinet will work with our senior pastor, Deborah, and the SPRC here at the church to discern my replacement at Shepherd of the Hills. And that's my announcement. Thank you so, so much. It's a tough announcement for me. We have had a great working relationship, but when you need rest, you need rest. And when you need to be away, you need to be away. And so we need to be gracious about it. We have some time to get used to these news and some time to have a farewell party. So watch for news of that as we approach the summer. We will do that probably early in June would be what I expect. And now I invite you to sit back and prepare your hearts for worship with the prelude. Good morning, I'm Lois Bird, the liturg liturgist for today. Please rise as you're comfortable and join with me in the call to worship, which will be on the screen. Trust in the Lord and do good. May the Lord give strength to the people. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. God is our refuge and strength. And welcome to church. My name is Ken Goodenberger, and I'm the music director here at Shepherd of the Hills. We invite you to remain standing as we sing a hymn that comes to us from our supplemental hymn book, The Faith We Sing. The words may be a little bit different, but the tune is familiar. The song is called Praise the Source of Faith and Learning.
Please join me in the opening prayer, which will be on the screen. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, give to us, your servants, the peace which the word cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on the doing of your will and that we, being delivered from the fear of all enemies, may live in peace and quietness through the mercies of Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. Our scripture reading is from Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. It can be found on pages 161 and 162 in the New Testament section of your pew Bibles if you wish to read along. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, on the basis of God's mercy, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable act of worship. Do not conform to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
you pray with me? Now let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Welcome to the second message in a new series. I'm crushed that I didn't get to be here for the first week, but I'm glad I get to be here for the second week. We are using a book, Bon John Ortberg, The Me I Want to Be, to give shape to this series. The subtitle is Becoming God's Best Version of You. And if you'd like to read along with us, we have some of these books available out at the Welcome Center, and you're welcome to grab one of those and, and spend some time kind of enriching your experience of this series. John Ortberg is a gifted writer, and he has a way of expressing things about the spiritual life that make them very easy to understand and easy to act on. I... Um, Alma did a wonderful job of introducing you to this series, to, to bringing up to you this idea that there is a me that I want to be, and there's a me that you want to be, and that is the me that God designed us to be. There's a bunch of me's that it's not. It's not the me that, that I think I, that I sometimes pretend to be holier than I am or smarter than I am or more successful than I am. And it's not the me I think I should be. Boy, I would love to be more extroverted. You have a team of introverted pastors here, and wouldn't you love to be more of a party person? I would. Or, you know, I'd love to be skinnier. I really would. I'd love to be funnier. And it's not the, the me that other people want me to be, not even my own beloved mother, God rest her soul, because no other human being gets to dictate what we're meant to be. And it's not the, God, the me that I sometimes fear God wants me to be, the one who can do everything the Bible asks. That's a daunting task, isn't it? A few years ago, a man named A.J. Jacobs, who was a journalist, decided that he would live according to the Bible for a year. And he was on television off and on with the crazy things that he was doing. He wrote this book called The Year of Living Biblically. And here's what he, he writes. He said, my quest has been this, to live the ultimate biblical life. Or more precisely, to follow the Bible as literally as possible to obey the Ten Commandments, to be fruitful and multiply, to love my neighbor, to tithe my income, but also to abide by the oft-neglected rules, to avoid wearing clothes made of mixed fibers. How many of us would have to leave right now? <laughs> to stone adulterers, that's a tough one, and naturally to leave the edges of my beard unshaven, he wrote, I'm trying to obey the entire Bible without picking and choosing. And that turned into quite a year for Mr. Jacobs. He says that anybody can do this, and he says, maybe you should even try. And he says, if you want a soft start, he says, maybe you should try some things like this. Wear sandals all the time. That's kind of us, so that one's not hard. Eat Ezekiel bread, carry a staff, play a ten-string harp. Avoid lustful gazing. And Jacob's even tried stoning some people. <laughs> he says, that's just everywhere. I mean, how can you obey everything in the Bible and not do that? So he went out on the Sabbath where it was obvious when people were breaking the Sabbath laws. And he carried a little pocket full of little bitty stones. And he would toss them at the people that he saw breaking the Sabbath observance. I would not recommend that to you. I'm not sure how that would turn out. And funny as that is, it's, it's the case that Jesus did not say, follow every rule. He said, follow me. He didn't say, I have come to help you follow the rules. He said, I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. 
And the truth is that God wants you to be you as God created you to be, and God wants me to be me as God created me to be. And the really good news in all of that is that God provides everything we need to grow into the fullness of that me, that me that God wants us to be. All we need, we already have, and that is the constant presence of the Spirit, the Spirit to strengthen us and guide us and shape our lives and our spirits. Because your life is not really your project. We have this myth in this country that we are self-made men and women, but that's not really a biblical concept. Your life is not your project, it's God's project. My life is not my project, it's God's project from the beginning to the end. And there is a God, and here's the part that is so hard for us, it is not me, and it is not you. I'm sorry to disabuse you if you thought that you were, but God, you are not God, and neither am I. As we move forward in this journey, I think it's really important to remember that God's Spirit never coerces us, never insists that we grow, never insists that we be transformed into this me God wants us to be, but the Spirit constantly invites us toward spiritual growth and toward transformation. And then we choose. We choose how we're going to respond to that invitation. And it's also important to remember that growing spiritually is not meant to be like wearing a hair shirt. It's not meant to be an unwelcome obligation that you pick up because you think you should, or even because you want to please God. That's not what pleases God. And the truth is that God is not going to love you any more or any less, no matter which choice you make. If you choose to grow spiritually, it will delight God's heart, but God will not love you more. And if you choose not to grow spiritually, God will not love you less. It's so important to remember that. God loves you no matter what. And God's intention for you is not that you trudge joylessly through life, checking off a long list of things that you do not want to do because you think you're supposed to or because you think God wants you to. You, God's heart for you is that you would live a life of joy and blessing and hope and possibility. So spiritual growth is, is not about doing things you don't want to. It is about deepening your relationship with God. It's about getting to know God so much better that you can begin to attune your heart to God's heart. And if you do that, as you get to know God, you will love God. And eventually, your desires will be the desires that God has for you, to do the things that God wants you to do. And along the way, you don't have to give up everything else that you love, things that you enjoy doing, things that give you joy, because God made you with those desires too, and God wants to satisfy those desires. James writes, Every good and perfect gift comes from above from the Father of all lights, who satisfies the desires of those who fear him, who satisfies the desires of those who fear him. God wants to satisfy those desires of yours that are wholesome and helpful. So how do we transform those desires that are not wholesome and not helpful how do we transform those into desires that draw us closer to God? We transform our desires by transforming our thoughts. That same scripture that you just heard, I'm going to read you part of it from the New Living Translation. It opens up a different aspect of it, I think. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. 
Let God change you into a new person by changing the way you think. Paul is saying here that growing spiritually begins with paying attention to our thoughts because the way we think inevitably shows up in our lives. The, the way we think drives the way we shape our lives. If we want to change our lives, if we want to change our hearts, first we have to change our thoughts. And your instant reaction may be, I can't help what I'm thinking. It just happens. And that's how it feels, isn't it? But the scriptures tell us in many places that you really can change the way you think. Um, and you can do that with God's help. Here are just a few of the places this idea occurs. 2 Corinthians 10.5 We take captive every thought to obey Christ. That means that we have the ability to take captive every thought. Colossians 3.12 Set your minds on the things that are above, not the things that are on earth. Romans 8, 5, 4, those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. It's possible to change our thoughts. So often my thoughts run on automatic. How about yours? Uh, it is um, somewhere between 25 and 28 minute drive to get from my house to the church. And about 75% of the time I make that drive. I don't have accidents. I must be driving okay. My hands are on the wheel and I'm driving okay. And yet I pull into the parking lot and get out of the car and I have no idea what happened all the way here. Probably that never happens to you, huh? There's just this automatic thing. My body was driving and my mind was AWOL. It happens at dinner sometimes. Sometimes it happens in church meetings. And that tells me that I really need to take captive every thought. I really need to work on setting my mind on the things that are above. But first I have to know what I'm thinking about. Because I don't know what I was thinking about on those drives. Do you? I mean, stuff, right? For that, I need God's help. The psalmist writes, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. Because the truth is, God knows what we're thinking even better than we do. And God can help us figure out what's going on in our minds, and then God can help us make better choices. My thoughts are often unhelpful. Something happens and it makes me a little anxious and my thoughts just multiply it, right? Just get in that little hamster cage and it gets worse and worse. I get a little miffed at something somebody did and I keep thinking about it and pretty soon I'm pretty mad. I get a little worried and it's 11 o'clock at night and by morning I'm, I'm bankrupt and, and my family has left me, you know? That's what my mind does. But I have a choice about that. In any moment of time, I can take any thought, especially one that's causing me distress, and I can just ask this question, is this thought leading me toward life? Is it leading me toward God's best version of me? Or is it leading me in the other direction? And if it's going the wrong direction, I can simply say, Holy Spirit, and by that I mean Holy Spirit who is here, 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 and here. Holy Spirit, would you help me? Would you give me the best thought for this moment? Now the important thing is to pay attention to what the next thought is that comes into your mind. And grab hold of it. Because God will give you another thought. It may be a sense of conviction. It may be a sense of comfort or peace. It may simply be the realization that whenever I stop and turn toward God, God is already turned toward me. <laughs> Have you realized that yet? God never turns God's back on any of us. 
when we turn towards God, God is always there facing toward us. And whatever that thought is, it's always going to be helpful. But our thoughts hold this tyranny over us. So we don't know what we're thinking about a lot of the time. And that means that we may need to devise some interventions for ourselves. We may need outside help to stop and say, oh, what am I thinking right now? I have the good fortune of having an Alexa in my house. I was a little reluctant at first, and then I realized how handy it was to say, Alexa, set a nine-minute timer for the noodles. And Alexa, set a five-minute timer for something else. And Alexa is faithful that when the time has expired, Alexa will go off and I will know. So I can say to Alexa, or I can say to Siri, who is always with me, I can say, hey, Siri, or Alexa, set an alarm for, and I can pick a time, 11.14, 2.13, 4.35. I can set an alarm, and when that alarm goes off, because those folks are faithful, Siri doesn't let me down. My Siri is an Australian gentleman. He will, he will tell me that my timer has expired. And when that alarm goes off, the, the thing to do is just to say, what am I thinking about? And write it down. And if you do that three or four or five times a day, you're going to have a pretty good sense about where your mind stays. And then once you know, you can make choices about that. You can choose what you're, you're going to think about. Ortberg tells the story of his friend Danny, who was a real adventurer. Danny did skydiving and all this kind of stuff, and he took up spelunking. And he went into a cave somewhere in Iowa, a deep cave, and he had a very experienced guide, and the guide decided to take them into an innermost cavern that very few people had seen. And so they got, they were walking, and then they were walking, and then they were walking, and then they were down on their hands and knees, and pretty soon they were on their backs, lying flat, pushing with their feet to get through this narrow passageway. And then it got to the point where he had to exhale when he pushed with his feet because he wouldn't fit otherwise. And it was about then that his thoughts just went crazy. He's like, I'm going to get stuck here. I'm going to die here. Nobody will be able to get me out of here. I mean, how would they rescue me? I'm going to rot in this cave. And he just began to hyperventilate, and the more he hyperventilated, the worse it got, because then he was pushing up against the top of the space and reminding himself how dangerous it was. And the guide noticed and, and said to him, Danny, I, you need to listen to my voice. Close your eyes and just listen to me. And I'll talk calmly, and I'll guide you through this. We're going to be okay. I've been through here before and I'll get you to the other side. But you have to listen to my voice. It won't work if you let your thoughts go crazy. Just focus on my voice. And that's what Danny did. He closed his eyes and he listened. And immediately the panic went away and, and he was able to move forward. He would not have been able to go the other direction. Just think about that. You can't push with your feet. You can't pull yourself out. He had to go and he was able to do it. So what voice do you listen to when it's dark and scary and you can't back out? Our guide is the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is with us, always and everywhere. And the Holy Spirit longs to, to flow in our minds all of the time to guide us. You know, um, Ortberg writes, the ultimate freedom that you have the freedom no one can take away, even in a concentration camp, is the freedom to decide what your mind will dwell on. I set my mind to look for the presence and goodness of God in my life and on the river of living water that is flowing through me. Paul writes in Philippians, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about those things. It sounds so beautiful. It sounds so beautiful. 
We get to choose. Minds that regularly meditate on scripture are going to have be filled with beautiful things, with things that are lovely and pure and admirable. But minds that spend hours watching the real housewives of Salt Lake City or Fifty Shades of Grey, not so much. Not so much. Because you see, it matters what we feed our minds. The psalmist says, Blessed are those who delight in the law of the Lord and meditate on his law night and day. They are like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaves, leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. And maybe you tried that. Maybe you tried reading the law, which to us is the Bible. And you started at the beginning because you didn't know any other place to start and you got down to Leviticus and you went, Whoa! I don't get it. What is all this about sacrifices? And you flamed out. It happens. So I would say to you, start somewhere else. Maybe start in the Psalms. Read a Psalm a day and let that Psalm become the cry of your own heart. Before you read, ask God to give you a word in that, that scripture. And then pay attention to the ideas or the words that jump out. When that happens, Ask the Holy Spirit, God, what, what are you saying to me in this word? What is your word for me? And as you read, engage your imagination as, if, as you do when you read a Western, if you love Westerns, or when you read a suspense novel, a mystery, or when you read a romance novel. You know, engage your imagination. See what's in the stories. Don't get stuck on something that you don't understand. Keep going. My practice is to use the Life Journal. If you've joined since I've been here, you have received one of these. If you haven't, if you put it away somewhere, you might want to get it out again. Very simple method of reading through the Bible in a year. I do, I've been doing this for probably 10 years at least. I don't always read everything. I don't always read a lot, but every day I read some. And every day I say, God, what is your word for me in this reading? And every day, there's something in the Bible that I I say to myself, I never saw that before. Where did that come from? And I know that's my word for the day. Or I just, I just something will jump out to me. If the whole Bible is, is too much, by the way, we have these, and I'll help you get one if you want one, and I can help you get started in it. That's what the, the Monday afternoon Bible study uses is this book. If, if the whole Bible is too much, get scripture cards. My daughter-in-law gave me these. These are so wonderful. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? You could hang on to that one for a week, I think, and it would be fruitful. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Get some scripture cards. If you can't start in the Bible, if it still scares you, start in God's creation. Go out on the patio and just sit down and pay attention and say, thank you, God, for all of this, for the flowers, for the trees, for the hummingbirds. Let your mind settle into a quiet appreciation as you look for the presence and goodness of God. And don't do that because you have to. And don't do it because you ought to. Do it because you want to. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Let it be so. Amen. Our song of response is, Open my eyes that I may see.
be seated. I invite you now to join your hearts with mine in our prayers for ourselves and for those around you. God of all seasons, you teach us that life cannot be life without change. You're the God of summer who takes us into fall, then into winter, then into spring and summer again. We thank you for your presence in our lives and for your opportunity to have abundant life in Jesus. We are here because of your grace and your love for us. And we are here because we trust that you listen to everything that we say attentively, that you know our needs and you know them right now. God, you know that we are not always welcoming change, especially the change that can be difficult. It is not easy to accept that sometimes we do not feel well. It is not easy to accept that sometimes we need help to get better. It is not easy to accept that we go through um, these cycles in our lives where sometimes things feel okay and then sometimes they don't. At those times, God, when we feel ill, when we have to be in a hospital, when we have to be on a treatment, when we have to be taken care of, we ask that you give us the healing that we need, the strength that we need, and the thoughts that are peaceful and that are placed in you, so that even at difficult times, we might get closer to you, and, uh, and we might seek you instead of go somewhere away from you. God, we thank you for those moments when we have needed you and you have responded. And right now, we have different needs ourselves and others that we know that we want to ask your to, your, to do your work in our lives and the life of those people. So we name those to you in this moment of silence. God, we thank you for your responses that are already working in our lives. And we continue to offer ourselves as living sacrifices in the knowledge that our lives are not just our lives, but you gave them to us with a purpose. May your spirit continue to guide us, inspire us to fulfill that purpose and open our eyes, our minds, our hearts to the truth about who you created each one of us to be so that we can be that and find joy in the name of Jesus. Amen.
week we highlight our ministry of our congregation so that you know where your gifts are being used. This um, week we highlight the ministry of our education team. They find the best curriculum of meaningful and inspiring classes for us to enjoy and learn from. Before the end of 2022, they offered the Advent class Light of the World and an earlier class called Signs and Wonders. Our education team um, has offered some of their current classes who are John 316, The Numbers of Hopes by Max Lucado on Sundays and The Me I Want to Be on Wednesdays. Their Lenten class is also coming in February and is titled Look, Look, Jesus and the Outsiders, Outcast and Outlaws by Adam Hamilton. Their Monday Life-Changing Bible Study, which is online, is a class that provides a weekly time for sharing and study that is truly treasured by those who attend that class. You can count on them for new and interesting education opportunities because they are already planning all of them for this year with you in mind. So we thank you for your generous gifts which undergird the ministry of our education team because you are always touching more lives than you realize. There are several ways to give including placing your gifts in the offering plate by the doors as you exit. And now please rise and join me in our song of praise. standing as you are comfortable and join your hearts with mine in prayer. Gracious God, source of life, love, and hope, we give thanks for the assurance of your presence with us all times and places, strengthening us and in us. In gratitude, we offer these gifts and with them our lives. Receive them and use them for your purposes. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. And now please join me with me as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We invite you to remain standing as we sing our closing hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be.
Thank you for coming. It has been good to worship with you. If you are a newcomer, remember to stop by and pick up one of our newcomer bags uh, just as a thank you for worshiping with us. Just a couple of announcements. Bring cans of soup and containers of soup ingredients sometime this month or early in February for our Super Bowl project led by our missions team. There, this benefits a couple of different food banks and donations can be placed into the big blue container out front or the white containers around the campus. And join us next Sunday, our social shepherds, for two travel logs at 2 o'clock on the 29th. Tom Richardson is going to share photos of Mount Vernon, and Adrian Hagen is going to take you on a trip to the Canary Islands. It'll be a lot less expensive than actually going to these places yourself. And they'll have cake, so sign up today. That we, our personal prayer ministers will be available to you, and we have refreshments in the fellowship hall. Don't forget this week to think about what you're thinking about and to make other choices. Make a note two or three times a day. What are you thinking about? And then say to yourself, what would be more helpful? Say to the Spirit, Holy Spirit, what would be more helpful? And then take that thought in its place. And now receive the blessing. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.